The things that I think are worth mentioning, perhaps in melanoma at ASCO this year in 2016, uh, perhaps I'd highlight two or three different things. The first one um, is that we've now seen, I think for the first time, quite a lot of data for the treatment of uveal melanomas, eye melanomas, metastatic uveal melanomas with immunotherapy, particularly the, the newer checkpoint inhibitors. And I, I, I can't really describe this as a highlight because unfortunately what it's shown is actually that the drugs don't really work anywhere near as well in uveal melanoma as they do in skin melanomas or indeed mucosal melanomas which is the other sort of subgroup of melanomas and so very few patients with uveal melanoma treated with these drugs seem to benefit and I guess that's the same for IPI as well. We know that IPI can work sometimes in uveal melanoma but it's, it, it's less than it will be with skin melanoma so although that isn't a highlight of the meeting unfortunately you know it, it's given us some information and I think that highlights the need to keep doing trials to understand more about the, the biology of the disease and I hope to be able to have rational treatment strategies because I think now uveal melanoma is really the main subtype of melanoma where we haven't really seen any major progress in contrast to skin melanomas and actually mucosal melanomas and mucosal melanomas actually drugs like nivolumab and pembrolizumab can actually work quite well sometimes so that's the first thing. The second thing I would mention is a trial of a drug called binimetinib which is a MEK inhibitor so a bit like a drug like tram tramatinib which is an approved drug compared with decarbazine phase 3 trial in NRAS mutant melanoma. So NRAS mutant melanoma is about 20% of melanomas overall and that, sh that trial was positive meaning that for progression free survival binimetinib was better than decarbazine. So that's, that's an important result. The side effects from binimetinib um, are the kinds of side effects that we're used to from uh, MEK inhibitors. So that's things like rash, um, rarely um, hypertension for example, um, uh, sometimes an effect on cardiac function. Um, and it may well be that binimetinib transpires to be a treatment option for that group of patients in due course. I think the difficulty though with that trial is that the level of benefit isn't as great as the level of benefit that we've seen with, for example, with BRAF inhibitors in BRAF mutant melanoma, or indeed the combination of BRAF and inhibitors and MEK inhibitors in BRAF mutant melanoma. And the other obvious issue is that decarbazine DTIC chemotherapy is no longer the standard of care. But of course, when that trial was set up, it was the standard of care. And this happens in rapidly moving areas that, that you know, it's already, in a sense, it's a comparator that, 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 that today we wouldn't really routinely use in that situation. And I think that the standard of care now in NRAS mutant melanoma would probably be anti-PD-1 treatment with nivolumab or pembrolizumab um, or the combination of, of Nevo and IPI. So I think it's an important result nevertheless, which is why I highlight it. And I think the third area I would mention is that we now got more follow-up data from some of the earlier uh, checkpoint inhibitor trials. So we're seeing uh, data um, for pembrolizumab out at further time points. And I think to summarise that very briefly, we can see that there seems to be a group of patients who are really getting durable benefit over two, three years, which is important. We saw some data today with Ke which Keith Flatty presented for, for dibrafenib and trametinib at, at three years. And again, we're seeing that there's a, a subset of patients who are getting prolonged benefit. So I think those are important findings, but Again, as ever, I think you know we still need to we still need to raise the bar. You know the, these treatments aren't benefiting 100% of patients. So I think the message overall is that yeah we're continuing to make progress, but we do need to keep uh, trying to make progress, understand the disease better, and wherever we can, you know keep keep giving people the opportunity to go into trials.